What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where we talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And I'm excited to introduce today's guest in a second, Peter Shallard of Commit Action. We've known each other for many years, um, reconnecting. And before I introduce Peter, um, I want to just point, there's some amazing other episodes people should check out, Peter. And you were mentioning, you know, really what Commit Action does is a lot of things, but if it's lonely at the top. And people need support at all levels, especially at the top. And I love talking about, you know, I had Moïse Navone Navone of Mobileye, and he talked about they were acquired by Intel for $15.3 billion. But I loved hearing the journey and what they had to sacrifice along the way. And at one point, he had to go back to his wife and kids and tell them, I'm pulling you out of all extracurricular activities because we can't afford them. There's no more eating out because there's an up and down journey to this, right? I remember I had uh, Tony Horton of P90X. People should check out that episode. He made money as a street mime, okay? Food and rent money, put his head on the street and did street miming to make food and rent money before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars of P90X. So there's all these stories. Check them out at inspiredinsider.com. And um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. And Rise25, I co-founded with John Corcoran. We help businesses connect to their Dream 100 relationships, partnerships, and we do that by helping you run your podcast. And Peter, you know, for us, and we were talking about before you hit record, the number one thing in my life is relationships. And I'm always looking at a way to give to my best relationship. So I want to have people, I admire what they're doing and they're giving to the world on my podcast to share what they're working on. So if you have questions, you've thought about starting a podcast, go to rise25.com, email us. We've been doing it since 2008 and helping others and doing it ourselves. So check it out. Peter Shallard is founder and CEO of Commit Action. He spent the last decade doing therapy and consulting with some of the world's highest achievers. He is known as the shrink for entrepreneurs. And for years, he was dissatisfied with pseudoscience and the lies in the entrepreneur personal growth world. And basically, um, he started Commit Action. And like I mentioned, it's lonely at the top. They actually help people execute and they hold them accountable to doing so. Peter. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to catch up. It's been so long. I'm like, so let's like... just let's just catch up on the interview. You know what I mean? Like, that's let's what this is it. about. And that's what podcasting is about, you know, catching up and making it go further with what people are working on. So tell people, I mentioned a little bit about Commit Action, but talk about the problem that you set out to solve. Yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah, so Commit Action came about um, when I was, like I've spent the last, I think I, I've been saying it's a decade for a bit longer than a decade now. It's probably been like 12 years or 13 years being the shrink for entrepreneurs. So I've been working, you know, one-on-one -on -one with some of the highest achieving entrepreneurs in the world, a lot of venture-backed kind of technology founders, that sort of stuff, really fun. And along the way, I connected with a lot of other entrepreneurs, a lot of other business owners. I was writing about my work online and kind of got this like long tail of people who were interested in this idea of, you know, what does it look like if you do, if you sort of psychologically optimize for these for business objectives? And I realized, you know, many years ago that there was there was kind of something that a lot of people struggle with in common that was a bit different to the very like white glove boutique kind of weird existential crisis dealing that I would do as the shrink for entrepreneurs. And that issue was largely like, you know, what we what we found when I when I sort of dug into it and started researching was that a huge number of business owners are really dissatisfied with their performance, that they have a sense, they have an internal bar that they set where they know they should be. It's their sort of internal definition of what the best version of themselves is. And if they're an owner operator of a small business, it might like, they know what they're capable of sales wise. They know what they're, they know the level of networking they should be doing or whatever the metric is, they've kind of got a sense and they fall short of it like often, often, often. And I sort of looked into this problem and realized that there was a a really massive cultural kind of illusion, which I saw an opportunity to build a business to kind of solve, which was people believe they, they've got it wrong. They believe that they're broken. 
that and and it's what fuels you know you said that i uh, this that was a very nice intro you said that i hate the uh i sort of load the self-help industry and it's right because people believe that they're broken and they go seeking personal professional development they go to big rah-rah breakthrough weekends and look at like limiting beliefs and try to do all this inner work because they they know that they're capable of more but they just can't quite seem to you know what they wake up every day swearing that today you know that today is going to be the next the day they turn over a new leaf, but then they just kind of repeat the same ha habits and patterns. And I, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of tell people the truth, which is like this isn't actually your fault. That most people are not nearly as broken as they think they are. And commit action came about when we started doing research and figuring out what was really holding people back, and kind of concluded that the reason that a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs aren't the execution powerhouses that they wish they could be is has nothing to do with you know deep in inner emotional blockages or anything like that it's largely because they're operating in a vacuum of isolation that it's very difficult to be the best version of yourself when nobody else is around no one's watching no one's supporting and what we found that there was, there's an almost perfect correlation with, with business owners who, who report that they're underperforming by their own standards and, and, and people who say yes to the question, how many people on earth know if you crushed it yesterday or just totally phoned it in? And, uh, and, and that's the vast majority of entrepreneurs. They're working in an environment, I don't know about you, but um, you know, even people have got very supportive spouses who are part of the journey they kind of insulate those people from how they're actually doing. Hey, honey, how was your day? Oh, good, busy. But you don't really get into the fact that from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., you just scrolled through Facebook and read a few BuzzFeed articles and like, do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. So that that isolation, the fact that when you decide to become, when you decide to start something and go off and be the captain of your own fate, the sort of master of your soul. You simultaneously, by, and it's never been easier to do that. It's never been a better opportunity to do that. But when you, it's a double-edged sword, that decision, because it immediately takes you out of the environment that humans are hardwired to perform in, which is being a part of something larger than ourselves, you know, having a group and being accountable. And, um, you know, we're social primates hardwired to thrive when we're when we're uh, when we're when we're working with others and for so many entrepreneurs as you said it's lonely at the top and that loneliness that isolation i think is the most misunderstood sort of social pathology of our time and that's that's that was the thread i pulled on that got me started with commit action i want to hear you know peter from the beginning the initial what commit action looked like in the beginning and then the evolution one looks like now but um, I love what you said. So what's holding people back when you're saying they're isolated and they don't have the proper amount of accountability or community? Is that what you would say is, is a big factor? Yeah, I think and I think that it, um, I think it's very invisible to most people that this is what's holding them back. Like, I think that there's a very common experience people have of um, sort of wondering why they're not more like Elon Musk. Like, why can't they step it up and run SpaceX and Tesla and the boring company and Neuralink and like, you know, kind of do it all and be this renaissance man of like, a you know, like this amazing entrepreneur who clearly has a morning ritual involving green juice and meditation that just makes him into like a superhuman. Right. Like what what is the secret? I think we read books about these people. We read the Steve Jobs biography. We you know, we do all that stuff. And it um and and, and we 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 disappoint ourselves by comparison but what i think a lot of people fail to understand is the environment that they're operating in they don't like they they sort of say to themselves in their basement in their pjs kind of bootstrapping and working away on their laptop to build their thing they're like why aren't i more like elon yeah the reason that you're more like elon is that not more like him is that he's surrounded by a web of advisors and coaches and uh, investors and direct report executives who earn multi-million dollar salaries who are all singularly like focused on having him show up and be in the zone, uh, be able to do his thing, be, you know, work in his zone of genius. And that level of social accountability and support unlocks, you know, incredible performance in almost anyone by choosing to start stuff, by being an entrepreneur, we take a, we throw all of that away and basically try to go and go and build in a total vacuum 
and um and and yeah like i sorry i'm forgetting what your original question was but uh no it was just was yeah the, what's holding people back and i just wanted to point out you mentioned isolation accountability and community and if there's anything right. else yeah the lifeline um and that's what we focus on is providing that lifeline of accountability to entrepreneurs who would otherwise be isolated because i mean there's certainly loads of different things that hold people back but you're going to work through any challenge you face faster if you've got if you've got that lifeline of accountability in your life because we, yeah. as humans we tend to outsource our our mental well-being and our optimization to the tribe so i want to say anyone who's listening to this podcast and you're not watching it uh peter is in a backyard so you may hear the sounds of nature in the background um he's not in his typical new york um uh, place. So just so you know, and if you're wondering if there's whistling in the wind, so I'm sort of jealous that you're in 70 degree weather in winter. Uh, it's not too obnoxious. Is it? The sun just so. came out a little bit and the cicadas here started. started <laughs> that's what going. I, that's I what mean, I hear. I did not know what that was. I'm like the cicadas. Okay. Um, so what's something comparable, Peter? Okay. Comparable would be, you know, when I picture accountability for health, okay. And I guess, do people use this for business and health or are people using commit action in your team and your coaches for business related things? Because I guess the equivalent. We, yeah, go ahead. We, uh, that's a good question. I'd say we're holistic, but our goal is business optimization, like yeah. business results. But we believe that like we're also playing the long game with our clients. Like we don't. We don't as uh, so what we what we do is basically accountability performance coaching. We help people get more focus, double their productivity, like by having really clear weekly plans that they, you know, that they commit to with an accountability coach, kind of like having a concierge for your to do list or a personal trainer for productivity. Now we're playing the long game, which means if our clients burn out after two months of the most furious, fast and furious productivity of their lives, we're failed. So health, wellness, balance, all of that is actually part of holistic optimization. And it's one of our big pillars that we actually really focus on in addition to ideas like, you know, specificity, getting the right level of implementation granularity for all of the things you're working on, which is a problem people struggle with when they're kind of making plans with their whiteboard just by themselves. We also have this idea of, we, we just call it the pillar of play. We ask our clients like, you know, what are you doing to not delay gratification? Because entrepreneurs in general and entrepreneurship is a game of delayed gratification, right? Like I think all of us, everyone who's listening to this will resonate with that idea of like, at some point in life, might've been when you were really young, might've been later in life, you kind of come to this place where you're like, if I work really hard and take a shot at this thing now, while my friends are off screwing around having fun, I'm gonna build this thing and then five years from now, I'm going to have the jet ski and the bathtub of champagne and like whatever else. And then I'll show them. Right. You're that, speaking to me, Peter. Keep going. Yeah. The <laughs> bathtub of champagne sounds good right about well, now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you're speaking to me in the sense of we definitely are like, listen, right now it's tough. I'm willing to work long hours, but I know, you know, in X number of years, I'll be able to relax more than maybe my peers or who cares about peers is I'll be relaxed more and I'll have kind of more of the life that I want. So what do you, what have you heard? What do people do in the not delay gratification? What have you seen people yeah, do to actually implement? Cause that's important. It, it's so crucial. And like, we try to, we try to find the optimal balance. And again, this is not to like beat the dead horse, but this is the power of accountability. Like when you're on your own in isolation, pushing yourself. If you're an entrepreneur, no one's got bigger expectations for you than you, right? So you're pushing yourself and you kind of know balance is a thing. And you're trying to find that like, okay, well, I'll take this time off and I'll relax. You're trying to find that sweet spot all on your own. When you have somebody who's outside the fishbowl, who's like a pro, a trained professional, who's helping you find that balance, they can pinpoint it much, much quicker. Yeah. And it's different for everyone. What we really focus on, one of the questions we ask, um, is almost the, it's not a sort of a clinical term at all. It's a, definitely a metaphor, but there is this really useful idea from old school psychology, like Freudian Jungian psychoanalysis, which is the idea of the inner child. What are you doing? I, the question I love to ask and our coaches ask sometimes is like, when was the last time you did something that your seven-year-old self would have just been over the moon to do? 
And a lot of entrepreneurs build because they want freedom and they, you know, they, they're, they're looking to achieve a certain level of lifestyle, but we are good at delayed gratification. And most entrepreneurs, certainly most successful entrepreneurs are actually better at kicking the can down the road and kind of having that, that later. And so the thing that we challenge our clients to do when, when we sense that they need balance that come in action is we kind of have them go and make a list of like, what did you, what did you love to do when you were seven? And the, and the better question is, what did you wish you could do when you mm. were seven? Then you get to the really good stuff because what a lot of people realize is like some of the stuff is well within reach. You know, I remember um, years ago, we, I had a client who had this problem who was building, had a multi-million dollar business that, that spat out seven figures of profit. They were really busy. But one of their dreams was they wanted to learn to fly and to ultimately like fly pilot, the private. They wanted to buy a little jet that they could get licensed to fly around and live that kind of lifestyle and severe delayed gratification because it takes a long time to do that. One of the breakthroughs that I helped them understand was you can go down and start to work on getting your pilot license. Like I think the introductory class is like $150. <laughs> and so rather than being a big stress ball and like almost losing steam and having a, a crisis of like motivation because they were so tired after working for 10 years, I was like, hey, look, next Saturday go take your first pilot list and you got to do that anyway. They don't let you just hop into the Learjet. You got to start in a little Cessna. And they went and did it and had a blast and started working on it and, and kind of found some balance instead of working on the 10 year plan. And then I'll get to have fun. They actually mm. brought the fun up the minimum viable dosage of fun to the present that refueled them and got them, um, you know, got them the motivational juice to keep going. Here. I love um, that. Give me another example. I love that because, you kind of almost said, okay, here's your big goal, but like, what's a small chunk you could actually do that gets you closer to that, but also even fulfill some of it in a sense and, and is maybe just as exciting to do than just think about and wait on. So I love that. Yeah, I want to fly a plane one day, own my own jet. Well, let's take a class tomorrow. What's another good one that you've seen people uh, take their minimum viable dose of? not delayed gratification. I mean, one of the, it's less sexy as an example, but one of the things is, is, is just having people understand that they can, that they've got to carve out time to do the things that they ostensibly like to do. Like uh, I, um, and, 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 and a, there's a principle of reducing friction that I think really helps. So I'll give you a, an example of this. I, uh, we had a client a while ago who, kind of understood this idea and it was really in like, I, we asked the question, what did your seven year old self wish you could do? Seven year old self was obsessed with motorcycles, had posters of motorcycle like races and stuff all over his bedroom walls. So, and he was quite a successful entrepreneur um, and owned a bunch of bikes. Like he had a collection, lived in New York city and had this garage, like everyone does in New York, like a, a little ways away. But he had like six or eight, like Ducatis and like all this stuff, never drove them though. Right. Classic, like, overworking entrepreneur. And so the, the, the conversation we had was about reducing the friction to be able to have those fun experiences. And, um, and what we came up with was actually he needed to always have a bike out of storage parked outside of where he worked and lived so that it was just there. And one of the challenges we set was when you feel like when you catch yourself procrastinating, doing whatever it was, was his thing when he kind of like, got out of the zone, lost the flow state and started fluffing around. Instead of doing that, just walk downstairs and get on the bike and blast up the West Side Highway for 10 minutes and make that in a seven-year-old smile. And then when you're sick of that, come back to like 20 minutes later, whatever, come back and see if you feel like working. And instead of it being this thing where like on a Sunday, if he had time, he would plan and do a major thing and go out on a bike with a friend for five hours. We made it this like everyday mental refresh. And what we're trying to do, like the psychological principle here is if your unconscious mind associates work with suffering, you're not going to want to do it. And what we had to do was inject those those pleasurable moments so that for him working was like a nice overlap and a mix of like struggle in the service of a long term vision and also like fun and joy and pleasure. And then his unconscious mind started to go, yeah, I can do more of this. And it, and it pulled him out of that burnout as well. What was it for you, Peter? What was your seven-year-old self excited to do? 
I um I'm a I'm a shame a shameless video gamer. Mm. I um when I was a kid I was a dork. I loved playing video games and I still I still do. Like for me, I what I love about it is that it's very it's so immediately accessible. It's very like low friction, right? Um but yeah, I was uh I spent for those of you who are keeping score at home and know about this, I spent like the last part of the year in twenty twenty here just desperately trying to get a PlayStation 5. I managed to figure it out. They were in really short supply, but that's what I really, I like, I play for minutes a week. Um, it's not, it's not necessarily a long amount of time, but I love escapism. Like I love to, mm. I love to read like a fantasy and, and science fiction. I love to play games that like take me off to a different place. What's your favorite game? Then? Ah, there's so many. I just, I finished um, the, be, you know, being becoming a dad, which happened to me a couple of years ago, really curtailed my gaming time. So exactly. I, the, the game Red Dead Redemption 2 came okay. out just before my son was born, and uh, I finished it. It took me two years <laughs> two years to finish, but I wow. finally finished it. That was amazing. I could totally relate to that. Like, I've been doing hours of research on the Oculus Quest 2. I think, according to this call, I should just go get it and uh and do it because it looks amazing um but particularly if you can connect up what your your professional efforts with like yes. those rewarding moments where you give yourself something like that it really builds that psychological connection which is like at, at the core for everyone you want to have this mental equation which is like the more i work and the more i delay gratification the more fun my life becomes and that that cycle has to be there um, otherwise, if it's not, there be their lives burn out. Peter, is there another? I love the question about what would my seven-year-old self be excited about. What's another amazing question that you tend to ask yourself or other people? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Um, there's so many. I don't know if there's something in like the commit action you know, sequence, like you want to make sure, okay, you're the coaches. Listen, you need to make sure you ask people this question, or maybe it's a point that people get stuck at in their journey. A big thing that we do a lot of at Commit Action. So we're, you know, just for your listeners, clarity, we're meeting with our clients, like our coaches meet without their clients every week, and they make a game plan for the next seven days. It's like they'll, they'll build out a to do list of the highest leverage, highest priority things. And then they'll actually create like a calendar, which is when, like, when are you going to work on those things? Let's set out the idea being we set appointments for meetings with other people we're always accountable to. We always show up for, but we don't set appointments with ourselves to do the deep game changing work. We take that, we let that slip in between the cracks of our low leverage copy dates. And it's like an absurd way of doing things. So we, we do the opposite. We build out this calendar of meetings. One of the things we ask a lot well, uh, you know, we make these weekly plans, what they're going to do, you know, what's the highest leverage thing and when they're going to work on it. And then the like a thing that we like to poke at quite a lot is what's the what's the ultimate purpose behind what it is that you that you that you're working on? Because I think that like a big part of, of, of accountability coaching, what we personal training for productivity, basically, is making sure that week to week people stay connected with that, with the highest leverage kind of things that they can be working on. And it's amazing how much, how, how often entrepreneurs engage in like a sort of a low level form of self-deception about what the best use of their time is. Yeah. Like, I think we can kind of look, we can think about, okay, this is my big plan for the year. This is what I want to accomplish. I'm trying to double revenue, you know, 2X the number of clients we have, or whatever the business goal might be. But it's amazing how week to week, like at the granular level, micro implementation wise, our clients will start really telling the coach like this week, I've just got to get to the bottom of my inbox. Like I need to do that before I can do anything else. And, and we, the question we ask is for what purpose, for what purpose? Like, let's like, okay, you tell, you're telling me this is a priority. For what purpose is it a priority? What's the ultimate intention behind it? And that that is kind of some of the secret source of high level accountability is to connect the dots between the little things we think we should do and what our self-confessed ultimate aims are, what our ultimate objective is. And what our clients find, what every entrepreneur finds is that like, I don't want to say half the time, but a good chunk of the time, we, we think we have to do stuff. We think that we're working on these urgent and important things. 
that are actually not really aligned with our ultimate kind of intention. Um, what are some so other excuses, what, Peter, that get in the way? Like you've probably heard them all. So I need to get the bottom of my inbox, right? What are the other some excuses that we tell ourselves that we should be aware of? Because in our minds, that's totally legitimate. Well, I have all this stuff. But what you're saying is, well, what's the purpose, right? What other excuses yeah. do people make? Common ones do you hear? I think that there's a lot, there's a whole mess of stuff around delegation, right? Like a huge one. There's so many small business owners who, and frankly, big business owners too, who really don't really, really have control issues. Like they, they, they struggle to be able to let go of certain things. And so they spend a huge amount of time, like half the plateaus that people hit in terms of business growth are caused by the fact that the founder of the business actually is too busy for the business to grow any further because they've failed at delegating, at training, at, at recruiting, at the piece of building an organization bigger than ourselves. And that's, you know, it's our job to remind entrepreneurs of the definition of, of entrepreneurship. And I, I believe that true entrepreneurship is, is the act of building something bigger than ourselves that runs without us. And a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs um, get caught up being, being, being own operators, being freelancers inside of their own businesses, right? Like, it's uh and and there's a lot there's all sorts of psychological reasons for some for some people it's the um it's that they love the artistry of what they do right like they love the, the craft who has trouble yeah who has trouble letting go because they know that um you know no one's going to do it quite like they would um but that's the challenge right that's the that's the game like entrepreneurship is about figuring out how you build an organization that does better architecture than you could do on your own um so yeah, that's yeah. a that's a big one. You know, Peter's I see your head nodding away. It's on just it's there. it's <laughs> amazing because obviously you've worked intimately with me, like thousands, probably tens of thousands at this point. So you hit all these pain points. I mean, those are, you know, the delayed gratification, the you know, having control issues with delegating, failing to hire or recruit properly, all these things. I you know totally hit home for me. I don't know anyone listening. It hits home. It was funny because I was talking to another CEO and really successful guy. I mean, he's, he started multiple companies um, and successful companies. And he said, Jeremy, how do you maintain balance? Like you just had a, a child in the past year. And I'm like, I have no idea. Like talk to, like you know, um, but it sounds like, I mean, any, any entrepreneur, founder, CEO, who's, who's thinking about these things should just check out commit action and um, it helps. But to walk through, because you have found this product market fit over the last over decade, what does that look like now? Like who's perfect to work with commit action right now? And, yeah. then, and then what do you do for them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, and we've been at it for a, not. I've been at the Shrink for Entrepreneurs for a decade. Yeah. Commit Action is a little bit younger, but we we when you and I first connected, I was just kind of experimenting with it. And the the original experiment was like I kind of looked at. I realized that accountability or lack of accountability was the problem, and started thinking to myself, okay, let's um let's look at what let's look at what happens if you take like coaching and therapy, and you get rid of all the coaching and therapy but you just keep the relationship like just that because I have this crazy theory that even bad life coaching, like really bad life coaching is actually somewhat effective because even if you have like the world's dumbest life coach, who just has no idea what they're talking about. Just having somebody check in um, and ask you how you're doing, asking you, Hey, you're, how was your week last week? You said you were going to do this. How did it go? That actually is proven. There's a lot of research that shows us that that type of inquiry when it's coming from another human modifies our behavior we do a little bit better when we've got that so the so the basis of commit action was like minimum viable dose of coaching and that's what we started with like the original iteration that i was on mixergy back in the day talking with andrew about was um we pair entrepreneurs up with somebody who want, meets with them once a week over the phone to talk about their goals for the next seven days and that's it and we do it again we check in with them a week later really simple really straightforward so over time we've kind of 
stayed true to the spirit of that minimum viable dose, but we've built it out. Um, you know, we built a proprietary software product that really kind of got us moving because we kind of realized the ultimate version of this would be if I came and sat with you in your office with your whiteboard and your kind of wall plan or your calendar or whatever, and sort of like looked at what's on the whiteboard and maybe scrubbed some stuff out and rewrote it in more specific language, like probed you about it and got got those goals dialed in and more clear concise and clear and then sort of circled the top three and said that's your focus for the next seven days i'll see you in a week so we built a software platform that enables that collaborative conversation to happen it's a it's a two-way like this beautiful web app that works um like the clients can jump on on their phone and actually see while they're on their weekly call with their accountability coach those top the things that they've put in getting optimized the coach will be quizzing them and say okay i'm gonna i'm gonna flesh this goal out say exactly what you need to do where you're gonna start and you can see that unfold see things being reordered reprioritized um you know see the calendar being built out of of when when you're going to be working on all of this take a look at it sync it with your work your 17 work calendars make sure that there is actually time it's another big part of what we do is like every week we make this plan and then we give the clients the ultimate accountability of like, look at your other calendars, your appointments. Now look at this plan for the deep work that you and I've just made. Are they compatible? Is there space? Because one of the things that a lot of entrepreneurs will do is book themselves for 35 hours of meetings in a week and then have this mental expectation that they should be doing about 20 hours of deep work on top of that. And they're also a new father or whatever it might be. And it, and then they finish, it's obviously not going to happen. And they finish the week beating themselves up because they didn't get more work done, but they actually set up, they, the rules of the game were such that they were always going to lose. So we catch that before it happens, get them with a realistic plan, um, or even say, hey, you got to, if you want to do this, you got to cancel some of these meetings. You got to make time to work on your business. And, uh, and so that's how, how long are those evolved. Peter? So granular, like, so how long do, is there a set amount or just varies from week to week? Does the coach meet with the, uh, that the person meets with the, um, the client. So we, we do very quick little check-in calls. They're usually no more than 20 minutes. Um, they're designed like our whole, our target market is busy people who don't want to spend an hour and a half with an introspective life coach on a weekly basis, but need that hit of accountability and mm -hmm. need a concrete plan. So they're nice and short. Um, and then we'll check in throughout the coach checks in throughout the week by text message, by email. So, you know, when you're meeting with your coach on Monday and we kind of identify Thursday afternoon, that's the that's the time you're going to work on. You're going to write that new website copy. You need three hours of dedicated copywriting time. Um, you'll get a text at, you know, 10 past three saying, Jeremy, it's three o'clock. Are, <laughs> are you at your desk? Are you writing? And I'm watching so, YouTube videos, Peter. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I should. It's, it's, it's being seen. It's the knowledge that. I mean, really what we do is we give the entrepreneurs the ability to have someone whose sole job, someone on their team whose sole job is managing their focus. And it's like crazy to me that that should be the first hire anyone makes. We let you do it fractionally for $2.99 a month, but like you've got to have someone on your team who keeps yeah. you on track. Yeah. It's super yeah. affordable and... Um, I don't know if, if someone signs up, hopefully they get grandfathered in, but I wouldn't even want to mention the price because I'm like, he's going to probably raise it at some point because it's so inexpensive for someone um, right now. It, for $2.99, they have like a, a personal person holding you accountable um, every single week and month is, is a tremendous value. You know, um, I love because people do it for their health all the time, right? And why not do it for your business? Um, and it works. Anybody who's had anybody who's worked with a personal trainer, um, for like at the gym, will tell you like the the you know people might not like the sort of workout style or whatever, but nobody argues with overall it works. When somebody is there going drop and give me twenty, you show up and you drop and give them twenty. Like you do it because where and the reason is there's a hundred million years of evolutionary hard wiring. We are, we're social primates. We care very much that the other monkeys think highly of us because we want them to, you know, look after us and leave enough fruit on the tree for us and our children. We're hardwired to play that game of like, I got to make sure that I'm being a good person to this other person. I got to make sure that I'm fulfilling my obligations and my promises. 
And the difference between, to take it full circle, between like the isolated small business owner and Elon Musk is the amount of relationships that, you know, he's got that obligation to show up and perform. Um, and so that's what, that's what we offer is the, the, you know, that coach who becomes that for everything that you're working on. Peter, I have one last question. First of all, thank you. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. I mean, um, I've learned, you know, from you, you know, distance wise, just listening to you talk about how do you achieve more, what's holding you back. Um, and so thanks for sharing this and also creating commit action where other people can do the same thing in a really systemized fashion. Um, so I want to point people to commitaction.com. Check it out. Check out all the episodes of the podcast, Inspired Insider and Rise 25. Are there any other places I should point people to online to check out more? Uh, if you want to, I've got two homes on the internet. Commit Action is the main one, commitaction.com, but also my, my Shrink for Entrepreneurs website and blog that's been around for, it's now like an ancient history item in the archives of the internet, petersheller.com. Been writing about the intersection of business and psychology there for 13 years or whatever it's been. So um, yeah, you can find me there and on, on Twitter uh, at Peter Shellard. And uh, yeah, get in touch. I love hearing from people. So I'm pretty easy to find. Drop me an email. Tell me about what you're working on. Let's, let's talk. Check it out. Commitaction.com. Peter, last question. Um, we talked about before we hit record um, about Carl. Uh, Matty Olin, and uh, talk a little bit about his story. Carl, Carl's a great friend of mine who I knew before I even started Commit Action, I think. And I, I gave a talk um, at a conference he was at where he was trying to figure out how to quit his job at Tesla. He worked, he was an engineer there and, and built a software company. And he joined, he was one of the first people who joined Commit Action way back in the day. Um, he worked with us consecutively for like five years or something and went from being a guy working on building his first bootstrap SaaS company to um, like solo where he really needed the accountability to actually quitting. And 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 for, for what I consider to be the only valid reason someone can leave commit action, which is that he had such accountability from the team that he built and the partners that he was working with that he no longer really needed what we were doing. And I was like, that's great, man. Like enjoy and i think he left when he was a, a head count of over 20. he founded um a company called clinic metrics that helps uh uh physical therapists yeah physical therapists yeah it's a software business that helps them scale their um their businesses and manage their businesses and then he also spun out breakthrough which is a um a sort of a marketing and uh, and and sort of events business within that industry as well, and has just been riding a, a rocket ship ever since. So he left us with double digits of employees and millions of dollars in revenue, and and has just since then taken it to the moon. Uh, and uh, a great friend that I'll have forever, I hope. And yeah, we're like just a cool a cool testament to the power of accountability and how it can become self sustaining. What did he say, Peter, was, what was great feedback from him that was working? What would he say, this is what really worked for me with Commit Action? I think that, I think, I think for him, the, the focus on the incremental, that a lot of entrepreneurs, especially when they're getting going, have got the like, I got a 10x, I got to go big, I got to figure it out. And what we do at Commit Action is, we're really about like blow yourself away with what you incrementally accomplish in a couple months in a year, right? Like our best customers are the ones who work with us and set these goals and chip away at these huge plans. And then they turn around 12 months later and are like, holy shit, look at what I built. We don't believe in overnight success. We don't believe in if somebody's telling you they're gonna 10X your business in 30 days, they're lying, right? Like it doesn't work that way. But 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 incremental execution when it's relentless and, and, and you've got to have the balance, you've got to have the sustainability, you've got to do all these things we've talked about, it will, it will blow you away what you're capable of accomplishing long term. And I think for Carl, that was what we really helped him do was that, that systematic chipping away at this big vision that he was executing on. Everyone check out commitaction.com. Peter, I want to be the first one to thank you. And uh, everyone, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks for having me. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.